Hi, now it's time to learn lambda expressions. Hi, now it's time to learn lambda expressions. And it's used for simplifying the usage of function, predicate, consumer and supplier functional interfaces. We are just using lambda expressions to shorten the code we develop. All methods of these interfaces, as you remember, we have an executive abstract method in each functional interface. Uh, for instance, it is apply on function or test in predicate. Okay, we will remove all the boilerplate code uh, around the function, and we will replace them with this expression, this error. This is called as lambda expression. This expression may be referred with the proper interface reference. JVM understands which functional interface you are implementing and it automatically invokes uh, the correct method. For instance, JVM may understand that you are using a predicate if you are returning a boolean after the lambda expression. Let's see it. Here we have defined a predicate, as you remember, special word checker, and it tests if our sentence has download word inside. And we have some boilerplate code here. We are creating an anonymous inner class, and inside it we are overriding the abstract method. And inside the abstract method we are returning a boolean, and only the executed part is this. So, we will remove all the boilerplate code around this execution code and we are replacing it with this lambda expression. Here, t corresponds to the input parameter and we say that get the input parameter and create a variable named t and by using this t variable do the logic check. That's why it's enough to use this t here and after the lambda expression just write the logic. Okay, that's all. So this five line code here has been reduced to only a one single line. In functional programming it's so important to write one liner codes. Okay, these are called as one liners. Okay, let me show you some valid lambda expressions. In the previous example, we did not define the type of the parameter because JVM automatically understands the type. But if you need to define the type explicitly, you may define it. Such as here, we define the type, the variable name, and if you are using the variable type, you need to put parentheses around the definition and then the lambda and then the check. For a lambda expression to be valid, if you are using um, a type parameter, you need to put parentheses. What if you need to use more than one input argument? In this case, again, you should put parentheses around the parameters and you may define the type of the parameters, integer a, string b, and you need to separate them by comma as an ordinary uh, function parameter list and then a lambda expression. This is important. You need to use curly braces if you are using return keywords. Okay. This lambda expression simply add this integer in the end of the string here. Okay. So returns another string. And this is also important. Since this is an ordinary statement, you need to put a curly braces here again. Let me show you another uh, valid lambda expression. As in the above one, we use a parameter list. Okay, we group it by parentheses and then a lambda expression. And here we did not use return keyword. Since we did not use return keyword, it's enough to use this statement naked. So you don't need to put curly braces or a semicolon here. It's enough to use this statement without a uh, semicolon. You can refer to a lambda expression again with a functional interface reference. As you can see, we have a lambda expression here. So this is a string 
and string s is an input to our predicates test function internally and this is the implementation inside the test method as you know so this returns a boolean that's why jvm understands that this lambda expression refers to a predicate and you may refer it with a predicate here okay if you try to refer to this lambda expression with a, a consumer or sub supplier this will not compile because the statement on the right hand side returns a boolean and the only functional interface that returns a boolean is predicate jvm is intelligent enough to resolve this and after referring this predicate you may use this reference as an ordinary predicate so you may directly invoke test method and inside it the input that will be tested okay after that the ordinary implementation may go on so let me repeat this the lambda expression automatically detects the proper interface according to the return value and then invokes the proper method if needed we will use these lambda expressions inside uh, the streams and you will see that stream functions will uh, directly invoke uh, the proper functional interface abstract methods. Since we did not talk about the streams yet, just know that we may refer to any lambda expression with a functional interface reference. Let me show you another example. Here we have an input t. Type is not important for now. And after the lambda expression, we are just writing, printing uh, the, this value to console. So this is a traditional consumer write because consumer does not return anything after getting an input and it just has some side effects such as print ln. That's why JVM understands that uh, this lambda expression corresponds to a consumer it gets this automatically and when you refer to this lambda expression you need to refer it by a consumer reference if this consumer instance will be used inside any functions of the stream uh, it will be invoked automatically the same thing goes here the input variable is multiplied by 3 since this lambda expression gets one input and return one input, uh, this will be referred by a function directly. Let me repeat this again. What if we are trying to refer a functional interface or a lambda expression that is not proper? Let's check it. Here we have an input of type string and we are just printing out the string after the lambda operation. This is a traditional consumer reference. That's why you cannot refer this consumer by a function. So this fails at compile time. You need to refer it by a consumer like this. Now let's convert our functions into lambda expressions how to do that we have developed this function before it's find word count and it simply finds the count of the words by splitting the sentence by blank characters the input is a string and output is an integer the number of the words inside so this is again a boilerplate code the definition of the anonymous class the abstract method definition, the override annotation, input, and the execution, the real execution, and a return value. So, lambda expression shortens this code and removes all the boilerplate code, as I said before. That's why we are using this input argument on the left hand side, then the lambda expression, and then simply a curly braces here a curly bracket and the return statement that's all and you may refer this lambda expression by a function that gets a string and outputs an integer the name of the reference is function so we may 
directly invoke the apply method here, we have shortened our code and we have replaced this long code by a one liner. Okay. Uh, you may remove the type definition here because you already defined uh, the input type here. That's why you don't need to define the input type here again. Let me create a class. Let me create a class. My lambda example and the main method inside it. And let me copy and let me copy a function from our previous methods. Here is my function. Okay, now we will now we will convert this long code into a lambda expression. For this, I am removing. For this, I am removing all this boilerplate code. And this one. And after that, I'm putting the kernel braces. And. I'm just defining a variable here. Everything is possible. You may say L, you may say P, whatever. But this is important. You need to use the same variable here, the same name. Okay? So you cannot tell T here if you defined the variable as P. Okay? So I'm changing it to P. and our lambda expression is ready since this is an ordinary statement you need to put a semicolon again at the end of the definition now this find word count simply refers to a function okay that's why you may refer it by find word count and you may use this lambda expression as it's an ordinary function instance okay so you may and you, and you may invoke all the methods of it so let's say apply test test and you may and you may assign the result to an integer let's say i and print it out we will see two You see too. So that's all. Now let's now let me show you a trick here. What if I remove the return keyword here? If you remove the return keyword, uh, things change a bit because if you are using kernel brackets you need to use the return keyword if you will not use the return keyword you should not use the curly braces also so i removed the curly braces that's why i'm removing the uh, statements semicolon so i have shortened the code 
a bit more so this is also valid let's try it the result is 2 so this is the shortest version for defining a function with lambda expressions let me define a lambda expression for replacing uh, a predicate let's say this is our predicate and I'm copying it here the same thing will go on we will remove we will remove the boilerplate code okay from the beginning and at the end and the return statement the only thing we should do is to define the variable t and t and t goes to t length is smaller than 50 that's all this lambda expression will be internally referred by a predicate the anonymous inner class instance will be created automatically by JVM. This is just a shorthand. Let me repeat it again. Lambda expression is just a shorthand to create some of the functional interfaces. But but at the back but in the background JVM creates the predicate instance again. Okay? That's why you may invoke uh, these references, all the methods. Let's repeat this again. Since the expression here returns a boolean, JVM understands that this whole lambda expression corresponds to a predicate and I can refer it by a predicate reference. What if I remove the string here? As you can see, the code does not compile because in this case, JVM does not understand what is the type of this variable t. This t may be an integer or a date or a string, whatever. So this length is may not be defined in this variable. Okay, if you don't use uh, the generic type on the predicate, you may define it on the variable definition but if you use it you need to put parentheses here but as you can see compiler does not allow to use a string here it says lambda expressions parameter is expected to be of type object so if you don't define a generic type here you may define only as object okay in this case you must cast this object to a string like this and then use it but this is not but this is not a cool solution that's why we are removing the type definitions here and use the generic type here okay and then we may invoke test method of size checker and this will print out false right sorry true right because uh, a talha has less than 50 characters let's see it true now let me show you how suppliers are written by lambda expressions because lambda expressions does not have an input so how to write this here we have a supplier example let's copy this to here and let's change let's replace this long code again with a lambda expression I'm removing the boilerplate code and this one also return statement and I will write something here as lambda expression but I don't know what to write on the left hand side because there is no input argument in this case this is enough to write 
okay from nothing to a calendar instance since this lambda expression gets no input argument zero arguments and returns an object jvm understands that this lambda expression corresponds to a supplier so you may refer it by a supplier reference and i'm removing this also now calendar supplier that get will return me a calendar instance okay let me print out c dot get time run as your application and here we get uh, a calendar instance by this lambda expression in the next chapter we will talk about how to ref how in the next chapter we will talk about how to refer um, class methods instead of lambda expressions see you then